going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, April 24th. At least I think it's Tuesday. All these days are starting to run together now. Um, and if you were here yesterday, you heard a very excellent call on stacking the White Sox from my co-host, Jake Hari. Jake, talk about how awesome you are calling that White Sox stack. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just really like the spot against Leak. He... He had given up a ton of hard contact against righties. He had been a reverse splits pitcher for a while. And I just thought he was pretty awful and the White Sox would be low-owned. And they were. I mean, would have liked a little bit more out of Abisel Garcia before he left. So that wasn't great. But outside of that, it was, if you had the top three in the lineup, Mancata, Abreu, and Garcia, um, even Del Monaco too, you did pretty well. Especially Moncada and Abreu, you both had thirty plus on drafting. So it was uh, it was looking like it was going to be a, a really fun night, and then Coors sort of went off. All the cheap guys went off, so didn't end up as I wanted. But hope you guys made some money off of it. Yeah, it was crazy. I, like I was opening up apps and stuff, trying to track. You know what was going on and then all of a sudden my twitter blew up with people just talking about uh the white Sox stack like i have i think one lineup with um where is it maybe i don't maybe that was the other one um but like so many points to abreu and who am i missing who else had, like, two dongs? Moncada. Oh, uh, yeah. No, Moncada. Uh, yeah, so Abreu had, like, 50 on FanDuel. Moncada had, like, 50 on FanDuel. Yeah, Abreu, 50. Moncada, 40. Double, yeah. triple, homer, three runs scored, and RBI. Like, that's just a monster game. I'm surprised he didn't swipe any bags. I guess he just didn't need to. Honestly, two dongs from Abreu. Yeah. Like, that's just nasty. Yeah, so that was... If you had if you had the Sox and like the Padres or the Blackmanless Rockies, yeah. you were good. Like you you definitely made some money if you had Carrasco or Tanaka or or someone like that, and you could afford those guys. So it you know like even Dahl was fine, the <laughs> cleanup hitter in Coors for twenty eight hundred on on DraftKings. So I had the White Sox Padres stack, just not the right one. Yeah, you needed Asuahe, and although he was probably second base eligible. Yeah. So, Abreu, yeah. Moncada, Garcia. Want, want on Garcia. Yeah. It was close. It was real close. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't quite put it together, but uh, it's really tough to do that and, and win a tournament, so. Yeah, for real. I'll take that performance from last Exactly, time. yeah. In the quarter when everybody has everything. Right. Um, you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do this. All right. Lots of weather in the first couple games, guys. So uh, you could skip most of this video down the line. <laughs> um, first game up, Orioles and Rays. Orioles, 4.4 run implied total. Rays, 4.1. It's a 53% chance to win for the Orioles. Alex Cobb going for Baltimore. Jake Faria going for the Rays. Um, I'm not touching any of the pitching here, and we can be relatively muted on our thoughts. Uh, Baltimore projecting an incredible amount of rain, basically starting at 5 p.m., <laughs> running all the way through the middle of the night. Uh, chances of this game happening are very low, but there's absolutely no way I'm looking at any of the pitching. Yeah, pitching's tough with, with any of these games, especially on a big slate where you've got some other options that don't have to deal with weather later in the slate um if this game goes i do have some interest in uh, adam jones and then pedro alvarez if he's batting second but honestly like you said i, I don't think this game has a like, really great chance of playing or playing cleanly so pitching is out of the question i don't think i'd be on Cobb or faria even if it clears up they're both kind of giving up a lot of hard contact i'm not really bought in on faria um, but I'm guessing he'd be really popular here if if this game looked clean. Um, yeah. On on the Rays side, like I I hate playing Rays, and since I'm only playing one lineup, um, 
and I don't really love any of the hitters, I'll probably just fade them regardless. Yeah, this this game is pretty much a full fade for me, even, like, if the weather was absolutely perfect, you could talk me into the top four guys on the Rays as a budget stack, and I would hate it, uh-huh. but that's neither here nor there. They're not going to show up all that often for me. Yeah. Um, for the Orioles... You know, I'd be fine with a one-off Chris Davis or a one-off Pedro Alvarez, um, you know, getting that lefty-righty matchup. But, and the only reason I say that, Alvarez 2,400 on FanDuel, Chris Davis 2,700. So it's a decent shot at a long ball from, you know, two guys that hit righty pitching pretty well. Right. But uh, the game's not going to happen, and I don't see the Orioles as particularly like an entertaining stack. Um, the 4.4 run implied total isn't horrible today. Everybody's kind of bunched together outside of that Rockies-Padres game. But this just doesn't feel like a spot where I'm going to want to have a ton of the game. And that's even that's independent of the weather. So Yeah, me too. There's just not too much to, uh, to say here. Agreed. All righty. Next game. Pirates and Tigers. Pirates, 4.5 run implied total. Tigers, 3.8. It's a 58% chance to win for the Pirates. Chad Cool going for Pittsburgh. Jordan Zimmerman going for Detroit. Uh, sort of a similar situation here in Pittsburgh. Uh, only difference is it does look like the rain is going to slow down later into the night. Um, this one looks like it has a better chance of being played, but also not a game that I think is terribly likely to be played. So you do want to keep your eye on this one. Um, if this game does go and there's a sign that the weather is going to break, I really like Chad Cool. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, and I, I think so. A sixty-nine hundred dollar pitcher with um, as a one seventy-five or minus 175 favorite, I think that you always have to kind of consider them yeah. regardless. You know, he might not have the biggest K upside. He, he can be a little bit wild, actually a lot wild. Cool yeah. Ken. Um, he's been under 8.5% swinging strike rate in all of his starts. So he's not really a guy that I would look to start. But if this looks like it's going to be a long delay and then this game will play cleanly or whatever, you wait for the rain to pass, then... I think you can you can consider cool here, but um, I don't know. I, I don't really have a ton of interest in the pitching here. I do like some of the Pirates bats, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't want it to sound as if I uh, am like the new. I'm like I'm gonna get his jersey or anything. <laughs> um, but that price point as a second starter on DK, or even just like the, you know, you use him to get every pertinent bat in Rockies Padres mm-hmm. along with, you know, one other guy, I think is functionally okay just because of how big of a favorite the Pirates are here, which kind of yeah. surprises me that it's as big as it is. Um, so I wouldn't have a ton of him, but I think he makes for a nice sort of fill-in guy at the bottom of the rotation, or at the, like, you know, the second starter type guy. He does not have, like, the best control in the world, so I I would be a little nervous there. But it's a lot of righties in the lineup outside of Martin and Candelario. And, like, it's not as if Martin is the kind of guy that is just going to mash a mistake into the seats. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, I I get it, especially if you're multi-entering. Yeah. Um, Yeah, he wouldn't be in my single lineup. Let's put it that way. Right. Yeah, that's where I'd be at as well. Do you like any of the bats here uh the a pirate stack on dk yeah. looks pretty nice they don't have the best prices on fanduel like josh bell's a hundred dollars cheaper on fanduel that's not enough Corey dickerson is the same price Marte is only a hundred dollars cheaper polanco is only two hundred dollars cheaper adam frazier is the guy that stands out the most to me he's only 2100 on fanduel um that's just a kind of a crazy price for him at the top of the order so i don't have a problem with the pirate stack uh you know, I expect to probably not even select this game as possible to be in my lines, but I'd be fine going one, two, three, four, five on on DraftKings. 
yeah, that's where I'm at too. I like Polanco and Dickerson, and then I even like Colin Moran at at three thousand. He looks like he's going to be a, a pretty good hitter. I, I mentioned him on the the night shift podcast last night. So Plug I don't know. I mean, yeah, he's he's three thousand. And third base, I don't know. I don't know how deep third base is. I haven't gone position by position yet. But just someone to consider if the weather is going to be looking okay. And I do like a pirate stack because Zimmerman does give up so much hard contact. This year, 41.2% this season. Um, And Pittsburgh's one of the most patient teams in the MLB. So I do like the stack. The problem is going to be the weather. And this may just not even be relevant in a few hours if we get a postponement yeah well you'll need to pay we'll need to pay attention to this one mm-hmm. and i think we'll know pretty early uh whether or not this game's going to go on or not yeah pittsburgh's the one that looks like it can happen so yeah uh as for the tigers i don't have any i don't want any part of the tigers <laughs> yeah i mean i always am considering castellanos and miguel cabrera but just because they hit the ball so hard against righties and lefties. But um, I don't know. I rarely actually get to them in a single lineup unless I'm stacking the Tigers. They, they couldn't look worse on FanDuel tonight. Same price on both sites for Martin. $200 more expensive for Candelario. $200 more <laughs> expensive for Cabrera. Like, I'm just, I'm not going to pay a premium on the Tigers for tonight. <laughs> yeah, not with, not with that run total and this no. weather. Speaking of weather... Another excellent, one. excellent transition there. Uh, yeah. Phillies and D-backs, they both have a 3.6 run implied total. It's 50% for both. Vince Velasquez and Robbie Ray uh, are the two pitchers, but I don't expect this game to happen. Um, Rain is supposed to start basically smack dab in the middle of it. I'd be very nervous to start Ray or Velasquez in this game. And the problem with that is I like them both. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I like Ray. It is a it is a sneaky tough matchup against the Phillies. They've been actually pretty good against lefties, but Ray sort of uh, trumps all that in terms of his K stuff. Like some of the best in the league, we talk about it. When he's on, he can strike out ten and in five innings or six innings, and you don't really have to worry about the matchup that much. When he's off, he's going to get hit pretty hard. And the Phillies do have some guys that can make him pay. Reese Hoskins. Um, Mikel Franco and Carlos Santana can all hit lefties fine. Of course, Reese is awesome against both hands. So, um, I don't know. I mean, like I like Ray for eleven thousand, but if if there's gonna be weather in this game, if it's gonna be going through delays, if it even plays, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of qualifiers for me liking Ray. I wrote him up in the Spotlight Pitchers article, but. Again, we just don't know which games are going to play and which aren't, and this one might not. If this, if the weather report that I'm looking at right now existed at 6:45 tonight for me, I would pull every piece of, or I would at yeah. least pull Ray and Velasquez from everything I had, because it I agree. looks like the type of game that's going to get a rain delay in like the third inning, and you might not see those guys come back out. Right. That's I'd, the. I'd that's be more the risk okay to- with a hitter in this game. And them squeezing in, you know, early work. But I'm probably going to, if, if the weather stays as it is, I probably won't even select any of those first three games or that we've talked about in Fantasy Cruncher. They just won't even be options for me. Yeah, that's that's definitely fair. And that's a shame because um, I loved Ray tonight, <laughs> and Velasquez looked like an excellent second starter on DK. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of Velasquez. And I thought he would be pretty chalky if this game looked okay for 7,000 with that run total for Arizona. But now with the weather, especially if I don't like him that much in general, I'm just not going to bother with yeah. that. It's, it's just a bummer. I hate these kind of days where like all of the 7.05 yeah. starts are just like, nah, you know what? You're probably not going to enjoy this. Yeah, this slate might start at... 707 with the the next game we'll talk about but yeah and oddly enough that's a game that got that had roof issues isn't it yep so hopefully they patch those holes yeah um 
Yeah, I would have been interested in the Phillies Diamondbacks game. Like, I think the D back stack looked pretty nice from uh, like a dollar for dollar perspective. But I, I just can't look at it right now. If the weather opens up, feel free to tweet at us and ask us our thoughts on Phillies mm-hmm. and Diamondbacks if something changes. But for now, anything we're saying is probably just going to be valid for the second half of tomorrow's doubleheader or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's Although what I'm afraid of, Tuesday, too. They might, not even play, they might not even play tomorrow. I don't know what the schedule looks like. They might have a getaway day tomorrow on yeah. Wednesday. So, who knows? Alrighty, let's talk about a different game that might actually happen. Yeah. Blue Jays and Red Sox. Uh, Blue Jays, 4.2 run implied total. Red Sox, 4.3. It's a 51% chance to win for the Red Sox. J.A. Happ going for Toronto. Uh, Rick Porcello going for Boston. Um, not really wild about either of the pitchers in this game. Um, I'm not really wild about the hitters either, just from a price perspective. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at anything here? Not a ton. Okay. I think I do have some interest in the Toronto bats. Okay. And so it'd be like Smoke and then the best player to ever exist, Teoscar Hernandez, <laughs> uh, Curtis Granderson, I think, that, and then Solarte, if he's batting cleanup. I think yeah. those guys all make some sense. Porcello's a guy that I'm not scared to stack against, really. Uh, I think he's pretty overrated he's an okay real life pitcher but like 9500 is an absolute no-go for him for I me agree. here i agree i think he's one of the worst options on the board at his yeah price. yeah i just don't i don't understand the price maybe dk knows and he'll go out and throw a complete game shut up <laughs> like i don't know he's not gonna be on my team though so hap on the other side like i don't want to use him here but he's been good and like, just look at the game while he's just, like, managed the damage. He's given up four in runs in a couple of his starts, but he's gone six innings, five innings, you know, six. He's just a pretty decent pitcher, and I don't want to pay these prices on DK for Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez and Hanley Ramirez, especially when I think they're going to get some ownership here. Yeah, it's it's just not a, like, I don't feel comfortable going that direction. Um Career XFIP for Hap against righties, 433. It's a little concerning when the righties yeah. in the lineup are Betts and Ramirez and Martinez and Eduardo Nunez. Like, I, I just I can't imagine wanting to use either of the pitchers here. Uh, I'm just way more scared of the bats. Yeah. Uh, uh, Teoscar Hernandez looks really nice on DK. He's actually three hundred dollars more expensive on FanDuel, so not <laughs> this is not not the same sort of play. But yeah. I think that Granderson and Hernandez look good at the top, and then to grab, you know, Smoke and Solarte as switch hitters after that, I think looks fine. So you can get to a Blue Jay stack a little bit easier, um, particularly because of Hernandez's price. If I were looking at the Red Sox, um, you know, it'd be hard to not like. I can never say it's a bad stack to have bets for Ramirez, Martinez, and then, you know, if you want to grab Ben Intendi or Devers, I think that's fine. Nunez is fine. Like, I don't love the pricing of these guys, but the game's going to happen. It's in a dome, so there's no weather issues, and the Red Sox bats are basically nuclear right now. So, yeah, they... I'm fine with it. Like, it's if anybody's like, yeah, you should never have the Red Sox tonight. Those people are probably lying to you. This team no, is no. loaded. Yeah, they're like, like I think one of Betts, Ramirez, and uh, Martinez probably has a, a really good game. Yeah. I I just can't tell you who it's going to be. Like, I, I do have a lot of respect for Hap. He's done a good job making guys miss. And those are pitchers I don't really want to stack against. He's not really a guy that gets super wild either. So I don't want to pay premium prices to stack against a guy that I think is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I couldn't. I couldn't be more in agreement here. Uh, I think it's if you're playing a ton of lineups, having Red Sox stacks today are completely reasonable. But they're yeah. not the they're not the spot to go like crazy over, because um, Hap's not horrible. Yeah, basically the easiest way to say it. Yeah, it's it's kind of a. I don't know. It's kind of a blah game. You would think there would be more to like go crazy about, but lowish implied total. 
the, the tight line, you know, it, basically a coin flip outcome makes it hard to really go in either direction. Yeah. This one we'll have more to talk about. <clears throat> Rangers and A's. Rangers, 4.6 run implied total. A's, 4.7. It's a 51% chance to win for the A's. Uh, Cole Hamill's going for Texas. Andrew Triggs going for Oakland. Uh, talk to me about how much, like, are you going to have 100% Hamels, 200% Hamels? How much Cole Hamels can you have in your lineup tonight? Yeah, none for me. <laughs> uh, I just, I cannot figure the guy out. He, um, he's just, like, gives up so much hard contact and, like, the numbers don't look great against righties and Oakland has all these righties. He survived against Houston twice, which I, I don't know how. Um, he's got a 44% hard hit rate, almost 45%. And like there, he's going to get eight righties here and righties with power. So Piscotty, Jed Lowry, Chris Davis, Matt Chapman, all these guys with, with pretty big power, Semyon leading off. So I like the top five a lot. Yeah. I don't even mind Matt Olson for 4,300. Um, I like this Oakland stack a lot. I'm going to keep stacking against Hamels because from what I look at for stacking against pitchers, Hamels really fits the bill. So I'm just going to keep doing it until he blows up. I don't I don't think he's this good of a pitcher anymore. Yeah, I like, uh, I like the hitters on both sides. I expect when I... Yeah. Um, when I deselect all of those first three rain games that the A's are going to pop up a little more. Uh, Semyon and Piscotty both look great on both sites. Uh, you know, I like Chris Davis and Chapman a lot just for the matchup against a lefty in a park that generally loves home runs. Um, Matt Olson is only 2,800 on FanDuel. So, uh, you know, if I'm expecting them to get to Hamels early, then Olsen yep. could see a righty. So at 2,800, I'll take that chance with his power. Uh, I don't have any problem with an A stack. I'll probably have a bunch of A stacks come 6.30 tonight. But I also yeah. feel the same way about the Rangers. I like Chu and Mazzara, Joey Gallo, all against Triggs. No problem going that direction. Um, Profar at 2,800 to fill out a shortstop spot is, is fine by me. Um, DeShields is got a bargain price still 2400 on FanDuel 3200 on DK if he's leading off in a game with a 4.6 implied total like I think that's the kind of spot where you're trying to grab him and then you know Adrian Beltre is timeless he's a little expensive on FanDuel $200 more than he is on DK but I'm cool with stacking all of the bats in either side of this game I, I love the Rangers. I think Triggs, I, I think there might be something wrong with Triggs. His velocity is trending downward since opening day, which it should be going the opposite way. He should start a little lower than what you had the previous year, but he's trending the wrong way. He's, get hit, he's getting hit really hard by lefties. He only had a 2.2% swinging strike rate in his last start against the White Sox, which is really concerning. Um, his fastball is down two miles an hour, sinker down two and a half, cutter down one and a half. So just a lot of red flags for me for Triggs. Absolutely do not want to use him, and I want to stack against him. I love Gallo for 3,900. Yeah. Dual position eligibility. Uh, Chu for 3,600. Mazzara for 3,500. Beltre. Just the middle of that lineup, really two through five, and then Profar in the sixth spot for 2800 is a nice value as well. Yep, uh, I'm with you. Uh, Rangers look nice, A's look nice. It's a really good game to have a bunch of, particularly on a day where we're losing a lot to rain. Like there's no late, you know, late yeah. precipitation chance, but it's uh, it shouldn't matter at all for this game. Um, I'm gonna have a bunch of bats here. Yeah, awesome hitting weather, 80 yeah. degrees. Yeah. A little bit of wind blowing in, but it doesn't really affect the stadium that much. No, it's a, a gorgeous day for baseball there. Yeah. Astros and Angels. Astros, 4.3 run implied total. Angels, 3.7. It's a 57% chance to win uh, for the Astros. Charlie Morton going for Houston. Shoyo Tani going for uh, the Angels. 
I prefer Otani greatly to Morton because of price. Um, but I don't really love either of these guys. I think they're both overpriced. I don't really know how to hash that out then in my head. Um, on FanDuel, normally I would want to go to Morton, but he's the most expensive pitcher by $600, and I just don't think that he is the best value um, on the board for me. The problem is sort of I'm going to need to spend up somewhere. It seems like I'm going to end up with like a really large amount of Maeda, but I don't want to have much more than or Otani. Where, where are you landing on these guys? Because this is like the trickiest spot of the day for me. I, I'm kind of with you there. I, I don't know. So Otani had a really rough start against Boston, but that was Boston when they were just on fire before they got no hit by Sean Manaya. Yeah, we, didn't so talk, that, we haven't talked about that, have we? Yeah, what was that on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. insane. I didn't, I didn't play much on Saturday, so I just was out and, and saw it at a bar. I was like, what? Is that from a couple years ago? Like, what? I mean, they but, scored like 50 runs in the five games before that or something yeah. insane. And then just... Just get no hit. Yeah, crazy. Anyway, sorry. Oh, uh, no. That, and so, uh, I don't know. I'm, in, I'm giving Otani a pass for that against Boston. They're all righties at the top of the order for Houston. But that run total does concern me. And I just don't like targeting pitchers against Houston. Yeah. So, I think Otani is off the table for me. Certainly would be a contrarian option, but I don't think like I'd rather pay down for Maeda a little bit, even though I'm not the biggest Maeda guy. And then Morton is definitely overpriced. The Angels are one of the most disciplined teams in the MLB, and I don't know. I, I don't think either Morton or the Angels bats have a big game here. Like I think Otani and Morton both pitch fine, but they are really overpriced, so can't really get to them. On the season, ranked 29th in swinging strike rate, Angels. Mm -hmm. Ranked 30th, Astros. These are the two teams that swing and miss the least. Um, yeah. Not a spot where I'm trying to grab a ton of pitching, even when I don't think that they're like, they're already not good values to me. That just sort of cements it. Um, I'll, have a, I'll have minimal amounts of Morton and Otani, and I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> And then the hitters on DK, too. You're not really getting a discount on any of these guys. No, they're, like Trout, they're real hard to get to. Trout for 5700 against Morton? I don't know what that is. That's like Charlie Blackman was 5700 in Coors against the worst pitcher in the MLB. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't uh, know what DK's doing. I, uh, it's going to be really hard to pay up for any of these bats. Implied total for the Astros is 4.3. That's not that high. So if I had to look at any in any direction, I would probably be looking at Astros bats. And they're just really expensive. They didn't pop mm -hmm. up for me yesterday. They're not going to pop up for me here. Um, at least I'm not expecting them to. It might open a little bit as after I shave those three games off. So I'll yep. likely be paying down a bit more for pitching. So it might open up those bats. Yeah. I, I don't like it. Like, it's... It's, it's going to be a really large amount of Rockies and Padres again tonight for me. I'm sure. I'm sure people will go, be going back to that well, and I can't really blame them. No, nah, there's, there's, not, there's not any intuitive spots otherwise, except for Rangers and A's. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I don't, yeah, I don't, love, I don't love the bats. I don't love the, the pitching. I just I don't really like this game at all. Yeah, I'm hoping it stays quiet all the way around and just ends up like four three and no one double dongs or yeah, does lots, lots of you. singles and like balked in runs and yeah. other weird nonsense. Yep. Okay. Royals and Brewers. God, nobody's gonna go to that game. Uh, four run implied <laughs> total for the Royals. Four point five for the Brewers. It's a fifty four percent chance to win for the Brewers. Ian Kennedy going for Kansas City. Zach Davies going for Milwaukee. Um, I won't have either of these two guys from a pitching perspective. But are you looking at? No, there's no. You're not looking at anybody here. <laughs> no, no, no pitchers. Definitely. I do really, really like the Brewers bats though. Kennedy's a guy I love stacking against. Huge fly ball pitcher gives up a ton of hard contact, and those two usually don't go very well. It's good hitting weather, even though it's not a great park for hitting. 
but like Yelich and Shaw and Thames have and Braun, they have more than enough power to get the ball out here in Kansas City. Yeah. Um, so I love Yelich. He's probably one of my favorite plays of the entire night. Just hitting the ball so hard all year, especially against righties. And Kennedy's going to give up hard contact. So Yelich, um, you know, he's not like the biggest power guy, but I think he's got a pretty decent chance to hit a home run here. And then I love the one through five for Milwaukee, one of my favorite stacks of the night outside of Coors and that other uh, Rangers A's game. I'm with you here. Uh, Brewers bats look nice. Yelich, Sean, Thames, all in a in a nice matchup against Kennedy, who does struggle against lefties. Yeah. Um, I like Ryan Braun as per usual on FanDuel, only 3,200. Like it's just it's a crazy low price for him. While I prefer getting him against a lefty, you know, to get him at 3,200 is is more than okay with me. Yep. I, I like a Brewer stack anywhere. You know, one to five, any combination of one to five is fine by me. Yeah, I love it. I, I think I think I would have them ahead of even some of the, like, I would have Yelich and uh, Thames and Shaw even ahead of some of the Coors guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, really like them. Yeah, they've got, the pricing on DK is a little bit better, particularly Shaw. He's $200 cheaper. Yeah, Shaw for 4K is, is pretty nuts against a righty like Kennedy. Um, I'd be fine with Luke Duda as a one-off. Mm. Um, I don't love the park, but he's 2300 on FanDuel. Um, I'm just willing to take a shot at that as like a one-off, you know, utility or first baseman guy on FanDuel. 2300 is crazy for a guy against, you know, Zach Davies. Not somebody yeah. that misses a ton of bats, so he could leave one out in front of the plate for Duda, yeah. and Duda can make that go a long way. I like Moustakis, actually, as my favorite one-off. He's got the seventh-highest average exit velocity against righties over the last couple weeks. Okay. Uh, 33 batted ball attempts. He's hitting – his average exit velocity is almost 97 miles an hour. So he's just crushing righties right now. And Davies is not a, really a guy I'm scared of. So yeah. I, I think Moustakis would be pretty low-owned. but. Yeah, I I like, like he looks really good on DK. Uh, he's <clears> only $200 cheaper on FanDuel, so he doesn't grade out as well for me. He doesn't have the same sort of uh, gap in price like Duda yeah. does. Like Duda's $900 cheaper than he is on DK, whereas Moustakas is only 200 bucks. So um, I, I agree that like Duda and Moustakas both on, on DK are like a really interesting combo. Mm -hmm. You can get to a weird Royal stack that nobody's going to have if you want to. Yeah, I mean, you you could do it. Um, I don't know. I just really, really prefer the the Brewers tonight. So do I, hundred percent. Do you do you think they're going to be low owned? The Brewers. Yeah. Um. Yeah, probably at least a little bit. I mean, everybody's going to like yeah. Rockies and Padres are going to dominate the the ownership yep. just by default, and they, yep. as they should. I would assume <clears throat> that Rangers A's is going to be the next most popular spot to grab people. So, you then then you have you know Astros bats are available, Red Sox bats are available. I I don't think that people will be crazy on the Brewers here. Yeah, I don't think so either. So I like them if they're going to be around like ten percent. Yeah, um, I really like that. I mean, I could see them being in a spot similar to the White Sox yesterday. Yeah, if they're that low owned, then I love them even more. Yeah, I'm with you there. Alrighty, Cardinals and Mets. At least I'm gonna have something to talk about now. Cardinals, 4.5 run implied total. <clears throat> Mets, 3.5. 61% chance to win for the Cardinals. Luke Weaver on the hill for St. Louis. Zach Wheeler on the hill for the Mets. Uh, I like Weaver here a lot. Um, he's probably my favorite. Like middle tier guy on FanDuel mm -hmm. I think I'm going to end up with a lot of him on FanDuel and then if I were, were playing, well I am playing uh, on DK uh, he's like the perfect second starter for me um, it'll be Weaver plus probably Maeda as like my prominent two guys on DraftKings yeah I certainly get the Weaver call I don't know that I love it but just going by what Vegas likes here he's, he's a pretty sizable favorite at home 
not going to have to deal with weather, so that's a plus. And the price is at a spot where I'm okay using him. He's been disappointing this year, not getting the whiffs and swinging strikes that we saw last year, which made him so popular. So I don't know that I love him here, but definitely a guy I'll consider with all these weather issues. He just sort of makes too much sense for me to, to cross off. Yeah. Yeah, he's, I, I, I just love this spot. I love that implied total. I love the idea of being able to get him with no concerns of like how the game's going to shake out from a weather mm-hmm. perspective. Just feels like really, really safe. Uh, wind blowing in a little bit uh, at Bush tonight. So it's just like another feather in the cap for Weaver for what's really like an incredible value. Yeah. Um, Bats-wise... You know, I could probably get to a Cardinal stack if I needed to. Uh, Dexter Fowler looks okay. Matt Carpenter looks pretty good uh, on both sites. Dual eligibility on DK is always uh, appealing. But I don't, I'm not really wild about too much on the Cardinals. They seem to be priced exactly where they should be. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want any part of the Mets. Yeah, I thought that it was going to be Steven Matz for the Mets <laughs> last night. So I was really pumped about using a Cardinals stack. I was going to be all in on Jose Martinez and Ozuna and Pham. Um, I could just imagine them just stealing all these bases, hitting doubles. and um, It was going to be really fun to talk about the St. Louis bats against Mats. But since it's Wheeler... Um, can't do that. I, I, yeah, I can't really like stack against him. He's been really good at righties in terms of limiting hard contact. Um, 84 mile an hour average exit velocity against righties for Wheeler, which is really good um, down there with guys like Jose Barrios, uh, Kyle Hendricks, and um, Nick Pavetta. Like, really, he's been really good at limiting um, hard hit balls against righties, and those are the guys that I like targeting for the Cardinals. So I'm not really on St. Louis that much. I I get the Fowler play and Matt Carpenter both under 4,000 on DraftKings, but that's really about it for me. Yeah, I'm mostly just on Luke Weaver today. That I won't have much uh, from a hitting side of this game. Yeah. All right, the biggie. Not like we're going to have anything unique to say here, but Rockies and Padres. Uh, Rockies 5.6 run implied total. Uh, far and away the number one implied total. If we ignore the Padres... Uh, it's basically a full run, nine-tenths of a run above the A's, who are second. Then the Padres are at 4.9. It's a 57% chance to win for Colorado. Kyle Freeland on the hill for the Rockies. Eric Lauer uh, going for the Padres. Uh, clearly, we're not touching any bats here, or any pitchers here, rather. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Uh, we're not touching any pitchers here. Uh, this game is all about the bats. Uh I know you're going to love this, so I'll get it out of the way now. But how much do you love Chris Iannetta? Yeah, I really, really <laughs> like him. Like He's batting second in Coors for – or he's batting in the top five. Sometimes he bats second, sometimes he bats fifth. I don't know. Uh, but he's 3,500 at catcher. It's just a pretty easy like cash play. If you play cash, yeah. just plug in Iannetta against the lefty. This guy, Eric Lauer – he looks pretty decent just going by his game. Like He's gone six innings in each of his last three starts in AAA. Struck out 10 in his last start in six innings and no runs allowed, but looks like he does struggle with walks a little bit. Um, and this is Coors Field, so I, I haven't looked at his pitch rep- repertoire, but if he has any sort of curve or fastball like changeup, it's not going to move as well in Coors. So I'm not scared to target Rocky's bats. His best pitch is the slider, if that helps you. Okay, so that, yeah, you, you can get away with that in Coors. Um, but still, like, Arenado, LeMahieu, Story, Ionetta, Blackman will probably triple dong now, lefty-lefty. <laughs> um, David Dahl, if he's in the lineup, that's lefty-lefty too. But I don't expect Lauer to be in this game very long. No. Um, if he comes in and pitches a gem in Coors or does anything like he's done in his three starts in Triple A, then we might have a, a star in the making on our hands, but I don't really see that. Um, uh, first round draft pick in 2016 um, doesn't have much of a pedigree as like a future starter. Average fastball, slightly above average slider. 
uh, below average curve change, below average command. Uh, just like a complete generic guy now. So okay. Um, yeah. Heading into Colorado for your first start and getting uh, some of these guys is it's going to be not a great spot for him. Everybody in the Rockies lineup is fully available for the stacks. I don't. I'll have some combination of all eight guys. Uh, I don't care how this lineup shakes out. I don't care what order these guys ultimately end up in. I just know that I'm going to have a ton of these guys because I don't have a choice. Um, Lauer is not very good, at least not a guy that I can expect to be very good in this scenario. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the Rockies' bats are still kind of cheap. Like, Ionet is 3,200 on FanDuel, which is preposterous. Uh, David Dahl is only 3,000. I know it's a lefty-lefty matchup, but, like, this is just a monster game, and these guys are underpriced. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a ton of Rockies. Ionetta made the spotlight hitters. Uh, easily could have put LeMayhew there and been happy. Easily could have put Arenado there and been happy. Um, you just you can't get enough Rockies. And I basically feel the exact same way about the Padres, just like a half step below them. Margot made the spotlight hitters. I love the price. The fact that he's leading off is great. Um, Will Myers, again, getting a matchup against a lefty, uh, might be one of the best overall plays on the board. 3,400 on FanDuel is absolutely ludicrous for Will Myers against a lefty in Colorado. And then, you know, I'm fine with Villanueva, Perella. I don't normally like lefty-lefty stuff, but give me Hosmer. Um, there's just there's not as many guys that are great values on the Padres today as there are mm -hmm. on the Rockies. But when we look at the crunch, there's going to be a lot of groups of Rockies and, and Padres together. And I'm perfectly happy with that because their implied total is just jacked to the roof tonight. I don't, I don't know what that phrase means, jacked to the roof, but it's, it's definitely a good thing, I think. Yeah, jacked <laughs> to the I'm roof. <laughs> I feel like uh, Jordan, the ceiling is the <laughs> roof or whatever he said. Uh, so, yeah, so... Rockies bats are pretty clearly what I want in this game. I do like some San Diego bats, but I don't love targeting against Kyle Freeland. He's just he's a guy that limits hard contact under 29% this year. Um, when he's on, he's getting a ton of ground balls. So that is a little bit concerning. But like Will Myers for 4800 is a price I'm willing to pay. Villanueva if he's in the lineup. And then Perella, I think, are my favorites for San Diego. I don't love the full stack as much as I love the Rockies. So I'll, I'll just say that. I agree with you there. Yeah, I'm doing backflips on FanDuel over Margot and Myers because of their price. 3400 for each of those guys, particularly Myers. Like, that's just... Their pricing on FanDuel is way, way, way too soft for the park. They are a little bit more expensive on DK, so it doesn't grade out the same. Yeah. yeah that's... I mean, it, it's going to be far and away the most popular game. Yeah. Now, here's my sneaky third favorite stack. Dodgers and Marlins. Dodgers, 4.6 run implied total. Marlins, 2.9, which is embarrassing. 70% um, chance to win for the Dodgers. Kenta Maeda going for LA. Dylan Peters going for the Marlins. Uh, Maeda is the guy that I'm going to have the most of tonight from a pitching perspective, and that's mostly because of the weather. Normally, I would have been getting closer to Robbie Ray, um, but in this case, with that game being uh, pretty tricky to get to, Maeda is just the guy for me at the top of it all. Uh, the Marlins are not very good. Uh, I think we all know that as evidenced by that 2.9 run implied total. Um, I'm going to have a ton of Maeda. I'm going to have a ton of Dodgers bats, and I'm going to pretend like the Marlins don't even play. That's um, that's pretty fair, I think. Uh, so I usually don't like Maeda because he, he's got kind of a short leash. Yeah. And he had this weird relief appearance and then threw 65 pitches in his next start. Um, and then in his last start, he threw 106. So... I do, I mean, if he's going to get anywhere near 100 pitches in this game, even if he goes five innings, because he, he tends to do that a lot, I think he can rack up some strikeouts. So I'm higher on him than I was last night. And when I first looked at this, 
and especially now with the weather with Ray and um, not crazy about Luke Weaver. I think my eight is probably um, dollar for dollar my favorite pitcher of the night. Can't really argue with that run total, and it's even gone down from from where I looked when it was last night. It was like three point one. Now I'm seeing two point nine in the same place. Um, I love it. Yeah, so just not scared about the Marlins. Like they they just don't have much to get excited about, and a good pitcher like Maeda can definitely take advantage of that. Like he can easily go five six innings, get a K per inning, and allow one or zero runs i don't think that's even close to out of the question here he's got 24 k's in 14 innings this year yeah yeah his swinging strike rate's really good 15.1 percent a relief appearance in there was weird but in his starts he's been really good so yeah i love it he's going to be everywhere for me in in large large doses and then i love the dodger stack particularly on fanduel Chris Taylor, 2,900. Uh, Enrique Hernandez, 2,500. Matt Kemp, yeah. 2,600. Puig, 3,100. Like, I just... These guys are all basically sub-3,000 price point guys. 4.6 run implied total. They get the righty-lefty matchup. Dylan Peters doesn't miss bats. Like, I love the Dodgers on FanDuel tonight. They're a little bit more muted on DK, but they still look great to me. Uh, they're showing up as, like, my third most frequent stack. Yeah, love the Dodgers as well. They're priced up a little bit more on DK, but not really. Like, Chris Taylor, 3700 yeah. Kike Hernandez, dual position eligibility. I'd probably want him at second base instead of first. Right. But he's 3400 He He crushes lefties, and he did last night. Um, yeah. He's probably going to again tonight. Matt Kemp for 3600 and then Corey Seager hits lefties really well for a lefty. Um, I don't know. I think Dylan Peters gets crushed here, so I love the Dodgers. One of those other teams that I'll be stacking outside of Coors Field. And I think you can get away with fading Coors Field if you want. There are some other options that, yeah, you're not going to have that huge Vegas total, but um, they definitely have a chance to be one of the higher scoring stacks of the night. And I think the Dodgers are up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Dodgers tonight. Just going to end up with a lot of them. I'll end up with a lot of Maeda Dodgers plus X type lineups. So. Yeah. All righty, let's finish this off. Giants and Nats. Uh, Giants 3.8 run implied total. Nats 4.0. It's a 52% chance to win for the Nats. Ty Block going for San Francisco. Tanner Roark going for the Nats. Uh, I like Roark here as a you know middle of the pack uh, pitching option. We're not looking at tie block at all, so I'm anxious to hear your thoughts on Roark. Yeah, I think he's he's never really someone that I'm looking at, and I wasn't. Um, but now I think you kind of have to. He's got over 24% K rate um, against righties this year. He's always been good against righties. He just He's got huge splits against lefties. But the bats you're really scared of are McCutcheon, Posey, Longoria. I mean, Brandon Belt, sure, but not really in this park. You're not worried about him getting taken deep too much out to right field. So I think that Roark is at least somewhat interesting for 8,200. He might be a, a huge trap here, but the Giants do swing and miss as much as pretty much any team in the MLB right now. So... Unfortunately, I have some interest in Roark. Okay. Yeah, I have a little bit in him. Um, he'll be a guy that just shows up and I'll be happy to have. But I really like the Nats bats tonight. And I think that's probably going to be a relatively low-owned thought process. Yeah, in that park, I, I think it will be. Uh, Turner's got a really nice price, only 3900 I love that for a shortstop. Um, Howie Kendrick, I'm perfectly fine with a 2900 Ryan Zimmerman, sub-3,000 price against a lefty. It went well last time. I plan on doing it again. Uh, Michael Taylor, you know, 2,500. You can get, like, the Nats can be a really, really cheap stack. They don't have the best implied total, but it's a lot of righty versus lefty matchup. And Ty Block is not the type of guy that's going to be just mowing people down. So there's going to get a lot. We're going to have a lot of balls in play here. Um And, uh, you know, I'm willing to take a shot on a lot of balls in play and the runs stacking up. It could, you know, they could just find people and 
it becomes not the best day for the Nats. But if those things start becoming seeing eye singles and balls up the line, um, I want to have a bundle of Nats uh, in a lineup or two at the very least. So I think I'll have them as like a interesting stack to go with one of like probably Rockies, Nats, and Maeda will probably be a stack that shows up here uh, when we run a crunch. Yeah. I like the Nats bats too. The only thing holding me back really is the park. Yeah. But you're going to get low low ownership because of that Zimmerman, Howie Kendrick, and then Michael Taylor are guys that I that I like. And then Trey Turner is sort of woken up since I think I trashed him on like Wednesday or Thursday saying that he hadn't been hitting well. And now like just looking at his batted ball logs, he's been hitting balls close to 100 miles an hour exit velocity over the last few days. So it's good to see that for him. He's definitely a guy that I want to look at a little bit closer now for 4,500. Um, I get the Nats stack for sure. Just It's just the park that, that worries me. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I won't have an overwhelming amount of them, but their prices are just too cheap on FanDuel. It makes a lot of stuff work. Yeah. Okay. So I ran crunches earlier today. Um, they have all of the games from the 7 o'clock spot, so this is sort of what it would be like if we didn't have weather and we weren't recording this at 9.30 in the morning for me. <laughs> but this is all the information we have right now, so it's the best that we can do. Um, let's see what we have for DK. So popular pitchers, Luke Weaver, Maeda, Chad Cool, and then Robbie Ray. Uh, Ray will likely be out of that. Uh, it'll probably bump up Roark and Otani quite a bit. Um, but that's a lot of Chad Cool. Yeah. Way more than I would have expected. It's not going to matter, but I think yeah. that he would have been an interesting play if that game actually happens. For sure. And then stack-wise, it's Colorado as the big priority. Uh, Padres uh, sneaking in as the second most popular stack. And then uh, Pirates, oddly enough, are the third most popular stack for me on DK. That's not what I would have yeah. expected. I, I like the Pirates. It's just... I like it. I, I wouldn't have expected them to be third. Um, but it's not going to matter because that game probably won't be included in everything we're doing here. But yep. uh, it's Rockies and Padres. Like, they're coming up for a reason. It's not just, you know, a, a gen generic course play. Like, it's a no. pricing thing, too. So on FanDuel, again, tons of Rockies, tons of Padres. And then uh, the Dodgers are my, my next most popular stack. And it looks like some combination of Nats or A's will be uh, will be there next. I think that Nats percentage is going to go up a lot as I pull out all of those games that are not yeah. expected to happen. From a pitching perspective on FanDuel, uh, you see a lot of Chad Cool there as well. He'll go away. Robbie Ray will go away. It's going to be probably, you know, Maeda. close to half for Maeda. A big boost to Roark and Weaver. And then just a smattering at the bottom. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to get away from uh, a heavy amount of Colorado and, and San Diego tonight. Although I do like the way like a lot of these first couple lineups are set up, where it's Colorado plus the Nats, Padres plus the Dodgers, Colorado plus Baltimore, Baltimore and the A's. Like I'm getting a lot of differentiated lineups. There we finally get to the, the full Padres and uh, Rocky stack. But it's a lot of options tonight that are in the sure. like a similar vein. Alrighty, one quick plug. Uh, if you go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo uh, and sign up using that link, a link that will be uh, below the video, uh, we are running another contest at Playline tonight. It is NBA slanted. So if you're interested in playing against uh, myself, Jake, uh, my live stream co-host, Chris Spaggs, Awesomeo himself. Um, there's the Awesomeo.com presents $1 million perfect line bonus, $2,500 guaranteed tournament. The tournament is called Your Awesome. $1,000 to first place. Uh, you need to pick the points, rebounds, and assists for Jimmy Butler, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. Um, this will be going off tomorrow night. Uh, so, you know, get in early get there and uh, try to take us on but um, 
go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo that's a w e s e m o <clears throat> and there'll be a link in the show notes but you know come play us on playline uh, you get a you get a free five dollars when you sign up using that code so uh, this tournament could cost you nothing uh you know 250 to get in today but you'd see five dollars back in your account tomorrow morning or wednesday into thursday rather yeah so keep an eye on that there will also be a, a playline article on awesomeo.com either today or tomorrow going over uh sort of how to you know project one of these guys uh, for the night so people can get a little bit of an idea since this is a a bit different of a format than people are probably used to talk to me about hockey tonight there is no hockey tonight there's no, no hockey games tonight. yeah we're getting towards there's only one game left okay uh, there's a there's a game seven tomorrow night so maybe I'll do a, a showdown I don't know um, like a showdown little write-up but who knows um, it's gonna be a really small tournament regardless so maybe we'll just wait until the second round starts there you go Three games on the NBA slate tonight. Uh, Philly and Golden State both with a chance to to close out um, back at home. Hopefully they do. I'm tired of the first round. Uh, Milwaukee Boston is the one that matters most. Uh, Seven o'clock start tonight. Two two. Um, that one will be pretty pretty interesting. Um, live stream tonight. I will not be a part of it. I have yeah. a feeling that another person on this video right now will be, however. Yeah, I think it's going to be me and Chris, right? Yes, so. it is. <clears throat> Should be fun. I'll be making my live stream debut. Uh, so if you if you didn't get enough of me this morning, um, you'll see me at 6 Eastern. And then I'll also be doing the Night Shift podcast, which just discusses the next day for... MLB for you early commuters or uh, people that want to listen to me or us while you are going to bed or something. So yeah, check that out. Uh, <clears throat> it's the night shift. It's a DF MLB DFS preview show. Uh, comes out the night before. Just gives a sort of an overview of the day. Uh, last night was the first one that we put out. Uh, pay attention. You'll see. Uh, you, you know, check our Twitter or the website. We'll have a podcast feed coming out shortly where there will be an audio version of this show um, and then just the, the regular audio ver version of, uh, of the Night Shift podcast as well. So people could listen to these things and just subscribe to them. It doesn't necessarily have to be the YouTube video. These aren't going away. Uh, we're going to continue to record, and I'm going to always be overlaid on an Excel spreadsheet. That's sort of uh, the only way that I know how to do this at this point. So <laughs> keep your eye out, though. Lots of audio content and video content uh, coming out soon. We're, we're putting that together right now. Um, that's basically it for me. Um, I won't be around for the live stream tonight. So best of luck to, to Chris and Jake. Uh, good luck reigning in Chris. Uh, he was in I rare form last night. I will try. Actually, no. I think I'm gonna let him just roam. I'm just gonna let him do his thing. Yeah, he w he went uh, pretty hard in the paint last night. <laughs> we had uh, some lovely drops in uh, viewership once once Chris got going. It was fun. Oh boy, it was a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should, should be interesting. Yeah, that's all I've got. Uh, best of luck tonight. Again, check out the contest on Playline Playline.com. Um, compete against us. I'll probably beat all of you. I'm just kidding. Awesome will probably beat all of us. Yeah. Uh, that is the way that that normally shakes out. But best of luck tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. Yep. Keep your eye on the weather. Yes. Yes. Keep your eye on the weather.